Hi everyone, Kieran of Sapin here from Filmstorm Studios and today we've got a very special video and we're actually going to be looking at Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain and it's actually been out for a while now but I thought it would be a perfect time to do a video on this. We're actually going to be looking at the uh, the Jade Forest map from Metal Gear Online the game and most of all of this was created by the Kojima LA Studio and I've actually got a few of the actual um, proper images. Uh, this was brought to you by uh, Jacob Norris from Pure Polygons. And he's actually got a really good article on all of this over there. So you can go check that out. And we're actually going to have a look at uh, the poly. This is um, the final version. Um, the final renders from that Jade Forest map. So you can have a quick squiz through these ones. But we've actually got a, another video that I've acquired. And this is actually looking at the untextured, low poly objects. And you can really see the difference between between the two images. So, I mean, this is essentially, well, let's find one of that, that tree. Where are, we, where are we? That was a good one, focused on the tree. So yeah, look at this tree. So basically what we're gonna be having a quick look at is, is this tree is basically this same uh, low poly object and they've um, made these really nice texture maps so this is going to give you a really nice overview of how what goes into creating these these maps for professional game development use so what i'm going to do first is i'm actually going to play the video and the video is about six minutes and it will run you through the whole map pretty much it will show you the waterfalls the atmospheric effects which are just pretty much put onto these um, these cards it will show you all the grass, the rocks, the trees, the backdrops, the, the, yeah, the distance background plates. So you'll get a really good sense of how what goes into creating these levels. And then we'll, we'll bring it all back around at the end. So I'll do a little bit of commentary after the video finishes. I'll go back and point out a few things that you might have missed. And then we'll compare that back to a couple of the images, final renders. And then that will be the video. So sit back and enjoy a six minute overview of this. And then I'll pop back at the end. All right, guys, thanks.
Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that um, overview of the video. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just skip through a few of the um, the over the, the main points of the video and we can actually have a look at some of this stuff. So the first thing that really sticks out to me is the grass. Um, they don't use billboards and billboards are like um, character facing uh, textures. So basically they rotate, um, these, these would rotate around to face the camera. But they don't use that, so you can actually see this is... Um, a pretty good similarity shot so you can see that they put uh, the alpha map with the nice grass texture onto this and then that would um when the it's actually rendered proper properly with the shader yeah you, know, you can look through it so that's how they create the really nice grass and leaves pretty much all of these these textures are created the same way so so that's a, a really nice way that they do that um, let me point out another thing that's the river so let me find the point in the video. Let me skip to there. Where are we? No, I think it's a little bit further forward. Down here, yeah. Okay, so let me just skip back a little bit. Okay. So this is one thing I wanted to point out. So when a character is actually moving through it, they're actually using this Raycar system to shoot rays into the um, into the water and this is going to create this enlarged uh, silhouette kind of back backdrop of the character and this is pretty much what creates the nice reflections that we see in these so you don't actually see the reflections rendering uh, uh, in these shots for the environment see how there's um, hardly any reflections going on here that's because that's all done through a separate shader but this is because um, we're actually playing a multiplayer game this needs to be done on the client side so this is a uh, rendering from our our server so that's why the our camera actually needs to do all the, our own computations like the um, his own shadows and reflections and stuff so yeah that's something really nice and you can see that they it looks really dense up here with these leaves but really i mean it's just um it's really just these uh texture maps with the the alpha maps coming through and they probably have the normal maps and they probably have AO maps in there as well. 
quite a lot of different maps and I mean each team uses a different technique I'm not sure what um, their team would have used they look like they have a bit of a backlighting going on so they probably developed a special shader um, for the Fox engine to to run run all that stuff all right so another thing I wanted to point out was this um, the waterfall if I find well actually first we'll have a look at the the building we're close to that here so I, I really like um, this. These are really, really low poly objects. I mean, look at these um, these bricks. I, I find that uh, pretty funny that there's hardly any polygons going on to in, into it. And then if we um, we jump to like a building, so have a look at, um, so essentially these, and all of these are these um, sandbags. So you can really get a good sense of how how they're they're made and you have the probably the AO maps pretty much all the same maps you can have the diffuse maps AO normal uh, maybe I'm not sure if they'll have specular or not um, what actually goes into their their individual pipeline but pretty much every map and I'm considering that they've probably made a lot of the stuff in Substance Designer um, as a lot of uh, games do these days um, but obviously these cans and stuff they probably have a lot of the shadows baked in already. Uh, depending, I'm not sure if they made two versions of the map for nighttime or daytime. So they would obviously bake uh, different different lighting into into those maps. All right, so let me um, let me have a backspace through here. You can even see some of the boxes on the shelf. That's literally just a cube that's kind of been deformed a little bit, and then probably has the um, the cartons on it. I was going to see if if we had an image image for that I don't think we do for that that particular one so um, let me come back out and again you can see you can pretty much create all of this yourself I mean look how simple it is it's just because uh, professional games they have really really good texture artists and um, shader artists um, but I mean if you were to put that in your own game it would actually look really really nice so it's just about understanding and good level design and um, reusing objects in a clever way. I mean, if you really think about it, they're using these shelves over and over again and subtle changes in the, the placements of objects. So you can see they've probably taken off a box and a lot of these are rigid bodies so you can kick them around and move them. So if we bring this, this guy around, you can really get a, a good sense of what this um, environment is made of. It's essentially just this. They've probably got some different textures on here, the, the tin roof, the bricks, and then if we find, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I have an image for that one. Yeah, well, you can kind of see it here. So these are the, the essentially these these bricks here. Um, it would essentially be these bricks here. So I mean, they're even reusing some of um, these objects. So and it's all about using the game's memory. I mean, you can't you can't go over budget when you you're creating your game. Otherwise. The frame rate will drop, and if it's definitely if it's a multiplayer game, everyone needs to be streaming the same environment. Um, yeah, and same as rocks as well. Everything that you see, and we've even got this other tin shed. So this is obviously the same, the same roof as you can see from up here that they they've reused uh, down here. So that um, subtle subtle um, changes in the the objects uh, gives you a really nice result. Uh, okay, so let's let's move down to the waterfall. I, I quite liked the waterfall. You can actually see the really dense uh, forest here. It looks really dense, but uh, when you bring it up and you put the um, the alpha maps on, you'll get these uh, these background images. Where are we? Yeah, so this is going to be the same kind of backdrop area. you can kind of see that yeah so I mean I'll just minimize that again but I really want to find uh, that waterfall okay so here we are so yeah you can see that the atmospherics they're essentially a large card as you can see these these massive sprite um, UIs they're just pretty much floating around um, kind of changing direction slightly over time and the textures on it are probably animated textures just to kind of offset um, the movement so it doesn't look static and the same reflections are going on and the water drops uh, 
they use their own textures. I found that pretty funny. They kind of cover the screen, and that's how they do the um, the water drops on the camera, as you can see. So I'll wait for that, and then they they kind of drizzle off after time, which is a nice little a nice little effect. Uh, let's have a look. Lots of dense grass, but again it doesn't look as dense so when you when you're going for it and you, you're not putting the actual textured parts into your your own games really go for it make put nice design in don't put it all clumped together um, see how they kind of break it up depending on the scale and um, height of the map so there's like a little tiny hill going on here so then they just come and fill it all in so it's a subtle um, design like that and you can see we've got the hut and this hut actually looks uh, where was it Zoom out. Looks familiar. I was thinking of this one, but yeah, again, that's the same probably tin roof that they used on a lot of the um the other ones. Uh, this is probably just a simple, um, plain, folded down with a nice cloth texture on it. So if you if you come up to the side of it, you'll probably see that it's a uh, it's all flat, but the the normal map really gives it that depth. And I'm actually not sure if they use the displacement maps as well. Um, that's something we'll need to check. But again, a lot of all of these, you'll you'll notice these will just be pretty much flat. You won't even see um, the little details on it. They're all um, projected on using the the nice maps that have been designed. Yeah, so this is the kind of roof that this is. But well, I think this is from a different area because this is, has open walls. Yeah, so really, really nice design all over. Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to point out. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, these um these trees. Now you see how really, really low poly, and this is um a really nice example of the the backdrop as well. These the backdrop is essentially just big cards, um, and this would definitely be for um, like these big mountains these big mountains up here they're just cards like no no way would they be anything else and um, as you you can't even make your way down there so they don't have to worry about the the cards losing their perspective so they they create the cards specially so you can't get around behind them and that's why they place them and you can even see that the the trees in the background become less dense um, but the the leaves are bigger so that way it kind of gives you the impression that there are more trees down there so it's really really good um, design they, they don't let the player go past these points so it gives a sense of a larger environment because if the player could keep just wandering around all the way up to the edge of it um, it would break the illusion and um, the quality loss would be um, pretty bad because you'd be able to see the bad textures so keeping the player kind of blocked off here is a really good way to make a place feel bigger but also um, keep the nice quality level, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I think I've covered pretty much everything. You can see this, uh, the nice reflections. Oh, this is that same um, perspective down into the valley with the the mist happening. You can see that the the mist is slowly uh, rotating up and down. If I go backwards and forwards, and you can see a good example of that. Uh, um, that specular map happening here from the wet part of the river that rock looks that, these rocks look really nice and they really catch the um, the backlighting that's uh, coming down through this valley yeah so it all looks really nice it's um really impressive to look at so um I want to thank you guys for to watching this little breakdown of this uh, the Metal Gear Solid 5 the Phantom Pain and also thank you to the team at the um the LA Kojima Studio, I believe it was called. Let me just double check that I said it right. There you go, Kojima LA Studio, that's right. And thanks to Jacob Norris for putting up these pictures on the purepolygons.com. That was um, a really good article. And I'll also pop the discussion um, art dump link into the description so you can go and read the article for yourself. Uh, it's really interesting. But, um, Thank you so much for watching that video at the start and then listening to this commentary after. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'll have some more tutorials coming out very soon, so stay tuned for them. But uh, thanks everyone for watching this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.